So before we talk about conservation of momentum, let's talk about total momentum. Here we have a 0.5 kilogram red car moving to the right with a velocity of 2 meters per second as a small 1 kilogram blue car moves toward it with a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. To find the total momentum, you need to look at the mass and velocity of both objects. So momentum is the product of mass and velocity. To find the momentum of the red car, you would do the mass of the red car times the velocity of the red car which is 0.5 kilograms times 2 meters per second, giving you a total of 1 kilogram meter per second of momentum. For the blue car, you would say that the velocity is, I'm sorry, the mass is 1 kilogram. But for the velocity, you wouldn't use a positive, but instead a negative 0.5 meters per second. Again, this is because momentum is a vector. And if we decided that the 2 meters per second of the red car was a positive, then we need to say that the velocity of the blue car is negative since it's going in the opposite direction. This gives you negative 0.5 kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so this could be sort of a snapshot right before the two cars collide. If I wanted to find the total momentum at this moment, right before they collide, all I need to do is add those two numbers together. Um, it might be easy for me to just call this p naught for momentum in the beginning. And I would have 1 kilogram meter per second minus 0.5, giving me a total of 0.5 kilograms times meters per second. So that is the total momentum in the beginning when I consider both of these objects. So let's talk about conservation of momentum. Here we have a blue car that is about to get smashed. Nice. Now, if we rewind that and take a look at the force versus time graphs, we see that there is a certain impulse that each car experiences. The red car experiences negative 2.8 newton seconds of impulse, and the blue car, 0.2, basically 8 newton seconds of impulse. These impulses, or change of momentums, are equal and opposite. This, of course, has to do with Newton's third law. So conservation of momentum really depends on Isaac Newton's third law, which says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, for example, with a red car and the blue car colliding, let's call one uh, thing one and the other thing two, just so it's a bit more general. When these two cars collide, the force that is experienced by car one that slows it down is equal and opposite to the force experienced by car two. They do not experience different amounts of force. So we would write this F1 equals negative F2, which of course is Newton's third law. For a reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Um, earlier we talked about how Newton's second law, F equals MA, can be thought of as not acceleration, but instead a change of velocity over a change in time. And mass times a change in velocity is a momentum. So force can be thought of as the change in momentum over the change in time. We're going to rewrite our equation of F1 and F2 with delta P's. So the change in momentum of the first car over time is equal to the negative change in momentum of the second object. Of course, the amount of time the collision occurs for is the same for both, so we can get rid of it. And here we have uh, an expression of the change in momentum for the first car is equal to the negative change in momentum of the second car, meaning the, the impulse that the first car experiences will be equal and opposite to the impulse experienced by the second car. You can, of course, see this on a force versus time graph uh, when you compare the imp impulses or the change in momentums, the areas of the impact. I'm going to expand this a little bit so that I get P1 minus P2 equals negative... I'm sorry, P1 minus P1 naught. And then this would be minus negative P2 minus P2 naught. Okay, now I'm going to factor in the negative so that this becomes negative P2 plus P2 naught. And then I'm going to add all of the initial momentums to one side and the final momentums to the other, giving me P1 plus P2 equals P1 naught plus P2 naught. Okay, this is a very important and helpful equation. It tells me that the total momentum after a collision is equal to the total momentum before. Hence the conservation of momentum. Typically, the way that you can express this quickly on the AP test is by saying the momentum in the beginning, P1, 
p naught is equal to the momentum at the end, p. This is energy conservation in its shortest form. You can remember it as pop or poop. Let's try a problem. You are standing on a skateboard with a 30 kilogram medicine ball and you throw the ball so that it has a speed of five meters per second to the right. What is your velocity? Okay, so here you are standing on the skateboard. It's a great skateboard, you're having a wonderful day. Here's the giant medicine ball. You're going to throw that medicine ball so that it has a velocity, let's call the medicine ball thing two, and we can be thing one. You give that velocity of five meters per second to the right, so we'll make that positive, you are going to have some velocity, we'll call that v1, to the left, and we should expect it to be negative. To figure out what that velocity is, we're going to poop. The momentum in the beginning is equal to the momentum at the end. If you and the skateboard are standing still in the beginning, then that means you have zero momentum in the beginning. At the end, you will have a momentum of u, m v1, and the momentum of the other object, m v2. Because you have different masses, you're also going to want to write m1 for the mass of u and m2 for the mass of the other thing. Okay, so to solve for your velocity, v1, we need to get it by itself. So I'm going to subtract m2 v2 from both sides, then divide by your mass. So this would be negative 30 kilograms, that's the mass of the medicine ball, times 5 meters per second, the mass, or the velocity of the medicine ball, over 70 kilograms, the mass of you. Kilograms cancel out, and you get 30 times 5 over 70, or we'll do down here, which is going to be about 2.14 meters per second. Oh, and that would be a negative. 2.14 meters per second, which makes sense because you're going to the left. Let's try another one. A one kilogram steel ball is fired through a five kilogram pumpkin. Okay, so here the steel ball is going to, we'll do a before and after. Steel ball is going into the pumpkin. The pumpkin is at rest, so we'll call the steel ball thing one, the pumpkin thing two. We know V2 naught is zero and there is initial velocity for the bullet, which we'll call V1, and that is 50, oops, sorry, uh, 30 meters per second. The ball enters the pumpkin at 30 meters per second. Okay, so that's sort of a before type of scenario. Then it passes through and exits with a velocity of 20 meters per second. So now there's gonna be a big hole, and the watermelon is gonna have some velocity to the right, call that V2. The bullet has passed through, so I should make it a steel ball and it will have some final velocity that I expect to be slightly less than 30 meters per second. Passes through, exits with a velocity yep, of 20 meters per second. How fast is the pumpkin moving when the ball exits? Okay, so in this problem, I would say poop. The initial momentum is gonna just be equal to M1 V1 naught, the momentum of the steel ball because the momentum of the watermelon is zero since it's at rest in the beginning. Then afterwards, both objects are moving, so I would say m1 v1, the momentum of the steel ball, plus m2 v2, the momentum of the watermelon. I want to find v2, the momentum of the watermelon, so I'm going to subtract m1 v1 from both sides. So I'm going to get m1 v1 naught minus m1 v1 equals m2 v2. And now I will divide. Uh, that whole thing on the left by the mass of the watermelon, M2. I'll do that up here. M2 equals M1 V1 naught minus M1 V1 all over M2. Okay, I'm going to do a little math uh, here. If I want to, I could factor the M out so that I get M times V1 naught minus V1. Just less math in my calculator. Okay, one kilogram for the steel ball. The initial velocity is 30. The final is 20. The mass of the watermelon is 5 kilograms. Kilograms cancels, and you are going to get a velocity of 2, oops, sorry, 2 
meters per second. And we would expect this to be positive because as the bullet passes through the pumpkin, it's going to kind of carry it along with it, and it will speed up in the same direction to the right. Let's do another one. A 0.5 kilogram car traveling at 1.2 meters per second forward collides with a 1.5 kilogram ball moving in the opposite direction at a speed of 2.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so in the beginning, I've got my 0.5 kilogram ball, I'll call that thing one, moving with a velocity to the left, V naught. And thing two is the 1.5, I'll make that bigger so that it's a little bit more obvious, the 1.5 kilogram moving with a velocity of 2.2 which I will call that B2 naught. So that's before. After the collision, you know that the 0.5 kilogram ball bounces backward. Okay, so now 1 has a backward velocity of 1.4. Call that V1. We can do this. We want to make this negative 1.4. And this will be positive 1.2. And this is a negative 2.2, it's in the opposite direction. Sorry, I forgot to do that. All right, so the 0.5 kilogram, oh my gosh, car, not ball. That's terrible. Pretend that this says ball. Okay, so the 0.5 kilogram ball bounces backwards with a velocity of 1.4 meters per second, which we made negative. And now we want to find the final velocity of thing two, the 1.5 kilogram ball after the collision. All right, so let's poop. In the beginning, both objects have momentum, m1 v1 naught plus m2 v2 naught. Uh, and at the end, only, oh no, both objects will also have momentum, m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Okay, so finding v2 means I have to subtract m1 v1 from both sides, so m1 v1 naught plus m2 v2 naught, plus, oh sorry, minus m1 v1 equals m2 v2, and then I divide both sides by the mass of the second object. So now I have this big equation to find the velocity. Plug in all my numbers, you could put m1 together if you wanted, these two terms together, and factor the mass out. I'll leave it as is for now. 0.5 kilograms, the initial velocity, positive 1.2 meters per second. Uh, plus 1.5 kilograms m2. v2 naught was a negative 2.2 meters per second because it's going in the opposite direction. And then I subtract 0.5 kilograms times v1 is, oh, a negative 1.4. So I should expect that to actually become a positive term. And then I divide all of this by the mass of thing 2, which is 1.5 kilograms. Okay, so you put all of this into your calculator, and you should get a negative 2 on top. Divide that by 1.5 and get negative 1 and a third, or negative 1.3 repeating meters per second squared, which tells me that the ball is still moving to the left. It has just slowed down because it collided with the 0.5 kilogram ball. Okay, let's do one more. Two boxes are at rest on either side of a compressed spring, as shown below. Let's draw that. Here is box one, the spring in between it, box two, and we can imagine that these two things are on a frictionless surface. Okay, the box on the right is twice as massive as the box on the left, um, so why don't I store this over here, let's say M1 equals, and then M2 equals. M2 is twice as massive as the box on the left, so I'll call this to M and I'll call this M. Uh, the spring is released and the right box travels with a speed of V to the right. Okay, so if this box travels with a speed of V to the right, we want to figure out what the box on the left is, which I'm gonna call the speed V, I'm gonna call this V2 equals V, so that I can then write V1 equals question mark, and hopefully I'll be able to get an equation that has V in it um, for V2, and I can solve for V1. Okay, so we want to find the speed of the left box in terms of V. Momentum conservation, so poop. In the beginning, uh, the spring is compressed, they're not moving, it's kind of like a little toy or like a firecracker, the pieces are going to explode apart. You'd have no momentum in the beginning if they explode apart. Then afterwards, you would have M1, V1 plus M2, V2. Now, I'm going to make a couple of substitutions. 
we were told that M1 can be written as M, and M2 is 2M. Then instead of V2, I'm going to write V. Now I can solve for V1 and have uh, these terms in, in my equation. If I subtract from both sides, I'm going to get negative 2MV equals MV1. And perhaps you saw that you could do this before. Since there is an M on both sides, we got these in the same terms of M. I can get rid of it. Okay, and that will give me negative V equals V1. Negative 2V equals V1. And that happens to be the final answer, which makes sense because my velocity is in the opposite direction, so I would need it to be negative. And it's twice the speed of the velocity. Again, makes sense because the second object is twice as big. You would do this in a problem on the AP test where it asks you to kind of solve it symbolically. If this didn't make a lot of sense, maybe pause and try again, see if you can work out and get the same answer. Congratulations, you are done.